Valiapan Olaganathan Chidambaram the 5th of September 1872 to the 18th of November 1936 popularly known by his initials VOC spelled VA UC in Tamil also known as Kapalatya Tamilan the Tamil helmsman was a Tamil freedom fighter and leader of Indian National Congress he was a disciple of Bal Gangadhar Tilak he launched the first indigenous Indian shipping service between Tuticorin and Colombo with the Swadeshi Steam Navigation Company, competing against British ships. Tuticorin Port Trust, one of the India's 13 major ports is named after him. At one time a member of the Indian National Congress, he was later charged with sedition by the British government and sentenced to life imprisonment. His barrister license was revoked. Early life V. O. Chidambaram Pillai was born on 5 September 1872 in Atapadaram, Tutakoran district to Ulaganathan Pillai and Paramayi Anil. When Chidambaram was six years old he learned Tamil from the teacher Viraparamal Anavi. He heard stories about Lord Shiva from his grandmother and stories from Ramayana from his grandfather. He heard stories from Mahabharata told by Alakulam Subramanya Pillai. As a child, he played goalie marbles, kabaddi, horse riding, swimming, stilt walking, archery, wrestling, silambadam and chess. He learned English from a Talik officer named Krishnan in the evenings. When Krishnan was transferred, Chidambaram's father built a school with the help of the villagers and appointed Arambalarthanatha Pillai from Etayapuram as the English teacher. The school was run by a priest at Pudiyamuthar. At 14, Chidambaram went to Thuthakudi to continue his studies. He studied at CEOA High School and Caldwell High School, Thuthakudi and Hindu College High School, Tirunelveli. Chidambaram worked as Talik office clerk for some time before his father sent him to Tiruchirappalli to study law. He passed his pleadership exam in 1894, returning to Atapadaram to become a pleader in 1895. In Chennai, Chidambaram met Ramakrishnananthar, a saint who belonged to Swami Vivekananda Ashram monastery, who advised him to do something for the nation. Here he met the Tamil poet Bharathiyar who shared his political ideology. The two men became close friends. <laughs> political life <laughs> Background In the 1890s and 1900s India's independence movement and the Swadeshi movement, initiated by Bal Gangadhar Tilak and Lala Lajpat Rai of Indian National Congress Inc., were at their peak. From 1892 Chidambaram was influenced by Tilak Maharaj, and became his disciple. Along with Subramanya Shiva and Subramanya Bharati, he became a prominent spokesperson for the cause in Madras Presidency. Following the partition of Bengal in 1905 Chidambaram entered politics, joining the Indian National Congress and taking a hardliner stance. He also presided at the Salem District Congress session. <laughs> <laughs> Companies and institutions Chidambaram established many institutions like Yuvanesh Prachar Sabha, Dharmasanga Nasavu Salai, National Godown, Madras Agro Industrial Society Limited, and Desabhimana Sangam. In response to the British India Steam Navigation Company's trade monopoly, Chidambaram started an Indian owned shipping company. He registered the Swadeshi Shipping Company in October 1906. The capital of the company was 10 lakh rupees. The number of shares was 40,000 and the face value of each share was 25 rupees per. Any Asian could become a shareholder. The director of the company was Pandi Tharai Thavar, a zamindar and the founder of Madurai Tamil Sangam. In the beginning, the company didn't own any ships, instead leasing them from Shaline Steamers Company. The BISNC pressured Shaline Steamers to cancel the lease. In response, Chidambaram leased a single large freighter from Sri Lanka. Realizing the need for the Swadeshi Shipping Company to own its own vessels, Chidambaram travelled around India selling shares in the company to raise capital. He vowed, I will come back with ships. Otherwise I will perish in the sea. He managed to secure sufficient funds to purchase the company's first ship, the SS Gallia. Shortly afterwards they were able to acquire the SS. Lavo from France. 
In response to the new competition, the BISNC reduced the fare per trip to RE.1 per head. Swadeshi company responded by offering a fare of RE.0.5 the British company went further by offering a free trip to the passengers plus a free umbrella, however, nationalist sentiment meant that the free service was underused. The BISNC attempted to buy out Chidambaram, but he refused the deal. The ships commenced regular service between Tuticorin and Colombo Sri Lanka, against opposition from British traders and the imperial government. Coral Mill Strike. On 23 February 1908 Chidambaram gave a speech at Thuthakudi, encouraging the workers at Coral Mill now part of Madura Coats to protest against their low wages and harsh working conditions. Four days later, the workers of the Coral Mill went on strike. Chidambaram and Subramanya Shiva led the strike. Their demands included incremental earnings, weekly holidays and other leave facilities. Chidambaram ensured the strike was widely publicized, and it quickly gained popular support. On 6 March the head clerk Subramanya Pillai met Chidambaram and said that the management was ready to concede their demands. Chidambaram went with 50 workers and met the managers, who agreed to increase the wages, to reduce the working hours and to give leave on Sundays. The workers went back after a nine-day strike. The outcome of the strike encouraged the workers of other European companies, who also gained increased wages and better treatment. Aurobindo appreciated Chidambaram and Shiva for the unequalled skill and courage with which the fight was conducted in his Vand Mataram daily on 13 March 1908. <laughs> <laughs> Arrest and imprisonment By 1908, Chidambaram's political involvement drew the attention of the British. Hearing of his intention to speak at a rally celebrating the release of Bengali leader Bipin Chandra Pal, Winch, a British official invited Chidambaram to meet him in Tirunelveli with his political comrade Subramanya Shiva. At the meeting, Winch expressed concern at Chidambaram's activities and asked him to give assurances that he would not participate in any political revolt. Chidambaram refused to accept his conditions, and so he and Shiva were arrested on 12 March 1908. The arrest met with widespread protest. In Tirunelveli shops, schools and colleges were closed in protest, and rioting broke out. Tirunelveli municipal office, post offices, police stations and municipal courts were attacked. A general strike was declared in Thuthakudi, which was the first political strike in India. Public meetings and processions were held, and four people were killed by the police. Although his supporters were able to raise sufficient funds for bail, Chidambaram refused to leave the jail without the release of Shiva and his other comrades. Subramanya Bharati and Subramanya Shiva also appeared in the court for questioning for the case instituted against Chidambaram. He was charged under sections 123A and 153A of the Indian Penal Code for speaking against the British and giving shelter to Shiva. Chidambaram refused to take part in the proceedings. He was charged with sedition and a sentence of two life imprisonments in effect 40 years was imposed. He was confined in the central prison, Coimbatore from 9 July 1908 to 1 December 1910. The judgment was widely condemned in the popular press, with even the British Statesman magazine claiming that it was unjust. Chidambaram appealed the sentence in high court, gaining a reduced punishment of four years imprisonment and six years in exile. An appeal to the Privy Council led to a further reduction in sentence. Chidambaram was interned in Coimbatore and Kananur jail. He was not treated as a political prisoner, nor was the sentence simple imprisonment. He was rather treated as a convict sentenced to life imprisonment and required to do hard labor, which caused his health to suffer. The historian and Tamil scholar, R. A. Pamanabhan, would later note in his works that Chidambaram was yoked in place of bulls to the oil press like an animal and made to work it in the cruel hot sun." From prison Chidambaram continued correspondence, maintaining a steady stream of legal petitions. He was finally released on 12 December 1912. To his dismay, the Swadeshi Steam Navigation Company had already been liquidated in 1911, and the ships auctioned to their competitors. The company's first ship, the SS Gallia was sold to the British Shipping Company. <laughs> Later life 
Upon Chidambaram's release he was not permitted to return to his Tirunelveli district. With his law license stripped from him he moved to Chennai with his wife and two young sons. There he ran a provisions store and a kerosene store. V. O. Chidambaram had a long correspondence with Gandhi he was not yet Mahatma during 1915 and 1920. In 1915, when Gandhi visited Chennai Madras then, both had met. Some Indian origin people in South Africa had collected money to help V. O. Chidambaram and have transmitted the amount through Gandhi. However, V. O. Chidambaram did not receive the money. He had some lengthy correspondence with Gandhi on the subject. In one instance Gandhi wrote a postcard to V. O. Chidambaram in Tamil with his own hand. V. O. Chidambaram was delighted on seeing the postcard and, for a moment, forgot about the money dispute. The term Gandhi Kanaku in Tamil meaning Gandhi's accounting become prevailing because of this incident. The term is often used in South India to mention for any debts where it is impossible to get back the money since Gandhi didn't give back the money to V. O. C. and used excuses to skip it, but on February 4, 1916, he wrote to a friend, in Tamil. Rs. 347-12-0 has come from Sriman Gandhi. In 1920, Chidambaram withdrew from the Indian National Congress, citing ideological differences with Mahatma Gandhi. He focused his efforts on establishing labor unions in Madras and writing. After moving to Coimbatore Chidambaram worked as a bank manager. Dissatisfied with the income, he petitioned the court seeking permission to practice law again. Judge E. H. Wallace gave permission to restore Chidambaram's pleadership license, to show his gratitude Chidambaram named his last son Vallaswaran. Chidambaram moved to Kovalpati and practiced as a lawyer. He rejoined the Congress party in 1927 and presided over the third political conference held at Salem. He said that he wanted to join Congress again because he noticed a remarkable change in the policies of Congress and he was happy to note that the policies which he did not approve of were withdrawn one by one. However, after the Salem Conference Chidambaram again severed his contact with Congress. In 1932 he moved to Thuthakudi, where he spent his time writing and publishing Tamil books. By 1935, he had written commentary on the first book of the Tarukural Book of Virtue and was published under a different title. However, it was only in 2008 that the complete work of his commentary on the Kuril was published. <laughs> Death He died on 18 November 1936. Topic. Written works Mayorum 1914 Mayor Review 1915 Anthology 1915 Autobiography 1946 Many articles in various magazines Translation works Literary notes of Tiracoral Topic. Published works Tiracoral with literary notes of Manakudavar 1917 Tolkapiam with literary notes of Ilampuraner 1928 Post-independence honours Posthumously, Chidambaram is known by the titles Kapaladiya Thamijan, the Tamilan who drove the ship, and Chekalutha the Kemal. A great man who pulled the oil press in jail for the sake of his people. His ship is situated near Marina Beach. Topic stamp The Indian Posts and Telegraphs Department of India issued a special postage stamp on 5 September 1972, on the occasion of his birth centenary. Topic. Statues of Chidambaram Many statues of Chidambaram have been commissioned, some of the more notable are At the entrance of the Congress Committee Office, Royapeta, Chennai 1939. At the Arch of Palayamkottai, Tirunelveli. At Marina Beach, Chennai, unveiled at the World Tamil Conference. At the Port, Thuthakudi, unveiled by Indira Gandhi, the former Prime Minister. At the entrance of Katu Paramakudi, VOC Mahal, unveiled at 18 November 2012. By Tamil Nadu VOC Paravai, Ramanathapuram district. 
at Simakal, Madurai unveiled by M. G. Ramachandran, the former Chief Minister. At the commemorative building of VOC, Tirunelveli, unveiled by Jayalalitha, the Chief Minister. The Tutakoran port was rechristened as V.O. Chidambaranar Port Trust by Manmohan Singh, Prime Minister and G.K. Vasan, Union Minister of Shipping. At Theni District Chinnamanar Center Place and Badi and Chilamarathapati Bus Stand and Puthapuram Bus Stand. <laughs> Ma. Po. C. M. P. Sivananam M. P. Sivananam, popularly known as Ma. Po. C. wrote the biography of Chidambaram titled Kapaladiya Tamalan. Later Chidambaram was remembered by all as Kapaladiya Thamijan. It was Ma. Po. C. who brought the fame of Chidambaram to the limelight. Books written by Ma. Po. C. on V.O. Chidambaram Pillai or Kapaladiya Thamijan 1944, Kapaladiya Chidambaranar 1972, and Thalapathy Chidambaranar 1950. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Film portrayal. In 1961, Kannada film director B. R. Panthalu made a film of Chidambaram's life titled Kapaladiya Thamijan. Chidambaram was portrayed by Nadigar Thilagam Savaji Gainasan, Subramanya Shiva by T. K. Shunmagam and Subramanya Bharathi by S. V. Sabiya. The story of this movie is based on Ma. Po. C.'s biography Kapaladiya Tamalan. <laughs> 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 Topic. Film 